Good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And we're listening right now or watching right now to the Morning Devo, the sessions that we get together in the 5 a.m. hour, whether it's 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays um, faithfully. Amen. God is faithful to me. Amen. And I know he's faithful to you. And I try my best um, to do what God called me to do, which is to get together with people and preach the gospel. Amen. Pretty much just getting into the word of God, which is very powerful. It's not just, oh, um, you know, it's a simple thing, one time deal and get it over with checklist type of thing. It's a lifestyle. It's who I believe in, what I believe. The word of God is true from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And when you study his word, you'll notice and you'll see that when you apply his word to your life in real time, things really happen in your life for the good, for your benefit. It's so powerful to know that we have a God that we serve that responds to our prayers, that reacts when we're in trouble, that rescues us, that really positions us for a blessing. But the dangerous part of that is sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll just get what we need. We'll just be selfish believers, get what we need from God, seemingly, because God knows our hearts. And when you just get what you need from God and say, God, if you just give me this, that, and the third, X, Y, Z, whatever that is, um, and that satisfies you, then you might want to recheck your position with God, with the Lord. Amen. Because Jesus is not a genie in a bottle. His goodness is far outweighs any other goodness that you will ever experience in your life and in my life. His faithfulness, his trueness, his power, his authority. Oh, man, I could go on and on and on. The Lord Jesus is authentic. He's true. He's exclusively excellent. Amen. He is the truth. But if you're going around thinking, thinking, because this is the, the point where Jesus knows our hearts. If we just think that we could use the Lord's name um, as we're casting out demons, which is cool. He gave us the authority as disciples of the Lord to cast out demons. And I know that's trending right now. Everybody's casting out demons in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are they going? That's a question. Um, and why is that the, the key to a people's ministry? That's another question. But the thing is, are you just doing that because you need to show people that you're somebody in the kingdom? You're getting what you need. And then you keep moving from there. Or are you in need of the Lord? Amen. We need what he offers us daily. Our daily bread is found in the living word of God. He is our daily bread. The Lord Jesus. Amen. So there's this difference between getting what you need and keeping it moving. Right. In the kingdom of God. Or needing the one who gives. It's a big difference. Today. We're continuing the series of the Jesus quotes. Jesus said what? Amen. And this is number 46. Amazing, right? (laughs) We keep on going with this because Jesus quoted a lot. Amen. He said a lot. The New Testament shows that Jesus is indeed the mighty God who has come among us as a human being, right? In a form of a man, the Lord Jesus, just to get what you needed is the subtitle for today. We're going to be in John chapter 6, verse number 26. We're going to hit that one verse. Amen. And it's going to have us thinking that where are we? And then I'm going to hit that one verse, but then I'm going to share a story in the scriptures. Amen. When Jesus walked on the water and you're going to be like, why are you going to talk about that? Um, Stay with me. Amen. And we're going to go somewhere about that. So I'm going to read a lot of scripture. I'm not going to put all The scripture's on the screen because of time. Amen. But I'm going to read through it. Um, But we're going to focus on John 6, 26. And then once we read that, then I'm going to backtrack to John chapter 6, starting at verse number 15. So get your Bibles ready, your Bible apps, 
and let's go for it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or anything like that, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. If you want it to be privatized, you could always um, go to live.sowinnerswithaz.org. And there's a tab there that you can request prayer or you can connect with me there. All you got to do is sign up. It's a one and done deal. It takes like 40 seconds. Shoot me an image, your name, and your best email so I could get in connection with you um, at the earliest convenience. Amen. Outside of the matrix so everybody doesn't have to see the communications that's happening. Right. So let's pray. After we pray, we'll shut us out for a minute. And then when we come back, we'll get right into um, this morning Devo. Amen. Father, I thank you so much that you are the God of heaven and earth, and yet you respond to those who are here on this earth, on this planet, um, that you are mindful of us is an incredible, amazing thing, that the God of heaven and earth, the God who created all the universes, the God who created man, stars, planets, the galaxies, um, the ocean, everything that we see and everything that we don't see, you are creator God. And yet you are still mindful of us, your creation, mankind, humankind, the human race. So I thank you so much, Lord God, for being who you are. What you've done already is more than enough. I pray I had your protection over my life and my household in the powerful name of Jesus. My whole family bloodline from the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between. I pray health to their body, strength to their bones. Lord God, that you would guide, guard, and protect us. And I thank you for every step that we take towards the heavenly throne that we know that we could trust in you. And I pray that over every single family member representing on the other side of this screen, on the other side of this mic, that you will bless them, that you will reveal yourself to those who are skeptics, who are yet to trust in you as Lord and Savior. I pray for them as well, Lord God, that you will open their eyes, open their ears to what's happening uh, before it's too late for their lives. I pray, Lord God, that you would have mercy upon us that you always have, grace upon us that you always have, and continue, Lord God, to fill us with your spirit so that way we can know who you are, what you've done, and what you're doing in this side of eternity. In Jesus' holy name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. Let's share this out. Help me share this out to break the algorithm and this whole um, lockdown on my podcast through social media. When you share it out, it kind of helps break it out because now your people will see what we're seeing and what we're hearing as well. Amen. I'm trying my best to share out the podcast, the audio only version. Amen. As I'm on a journey um, to try to completely license my online radio network and get off the matrix and get out of here because um, this is really um, limiting my reach. Amen. But with my radio network, amen, it, it already broke barriers so many times. Millions of listeners and all that good stuff. Amen. And on my website, on live.someone is with a Z, I don't have no constraints or anything like that. So I'm trying to transition. Amen. And you can help me do that. I will talk about that later. So let's share this out. When we come back, we'll get right into today's morning Devo. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. Oh man, those those seconds just fly by. It's incredible. Amen. But we're here. Let's go for it. Amen. I love what I do. I love the opportunity that I have to share this word, this message, this gospel, the word of God, reading it, applying it, testifying about it. Amen. And I want you to do that. I want you to testify the goodness of God in your life. 
So that way others could see that this is just not a limited situation for a limited amount of people. This is an unlimited message for an unlimited amount of people. Amen. We serve a God with no limits. There's nothing that you could do to put God in a box. Amen. Except put him in the box in your mind or try to take advantage of what God has done. Amen. For others. And you think you could just go around just getting what you need. Right. And God will be oblivious like he will be clueless about that. But we serve a God who knows all things. So we can't go around just to get what you need. And very selfish if you think about it. Amen. Um, Let's spread this word. Let's spread this gospel. Let's spread this message. So that way others could see um, the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's go for it. So Jesus said what? We're going to be in John chapter 6 verse 26. And then... Or we'll read when Jesus walked on the water and then we'll put it all together. I'm relying on Holy Spirit to really, you know, lock this down for us so that way we could see with our own eyes. Amen. And with our own ears, uh, what this means. Is it really selfish to take God at his word, right? And just get what you need from that. And then just, you know, that's it. As if we could do that. It seems that way, right? It seems like people could take advantage of the grace of God. um, But that's not the truth. Amen. The truth is he reveals Jesus because Jesus is the word, the living word. Amen. And through that living word, we get what God offers. Hope that makes sense. John chapter 6, verse number 26. Jesus answered them and said, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. In other words, Jesus said, listen, you're not following me for a miracle in your life. You're following me for a natural thing that you need to fill your stomachs. When Jesus made, did miracles, feeding thousands of people in that crowd, maybe they were people who were genuinely seeking after the Lord. And they experienced and they were involved in those miracles and they were truly looking for Jesus and truly being discipled by him. But the many others were just going after Jesus, seeking him, not because of the miracles, right? But because there was food involved, because there was a need that was met, because they were in a natural way of thinking And because of the natural way of thinking, they said, if we get around this Lord Jesus, if we get around Jesus, we'll get fed. You know, we won't starve. Uh, We'll be good. We'll just get what we need and then we'll leave. A lot of people live their life like that. And hopefully it's not me and hopefully that's not you. So. So if Jesus is answering a question, that means there's something before he made this statement. Amen. That's why I want to read. Starting from John chapter 6, verse number 15. Amen. I'm going to read it out. um, And let's read it together so you can get your Bibles ready. Amen. So that's all I had. That's the whole presentation. Because right there, it speaks to so many people right now. People who um, we might notice that it seems like they only show up to church. Or they only show up to a worship service. Or they only show up. Um, to engage the body of Christ when they're in need. Now, listen, um, really, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have a need, of course, we go to the God who supplies for every one of our needs. Amen. But if that's all you're after, what about the miracles? God does miracles. Jesus himself said, listen, if you don't believe in who I am and what I'm claiming, at least he said, believe in the miracles that I performed. Amen. The Lord knows our hearts. The Lord knows the heart of men. He'll be like, listen, I know you don't really want to follow me. You don't want to worship me. Amen. But what about my miracles? Wouldn't you want to see a miracle in your life or to see a miracle in your family's life? Um, And from those miracles, I'm believing, you know, you you, God has done miracles in my life. Amen. I, I live with miracles. I live with two miracles. My two daughters are miracles. Amen. And. I just didn't need God for a miracle. I needed God for my life. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need him daily. Not just for what he can do for me. It's because of what he has done already. I hope that that makes sense. Amen. Because a lot of people think, ah, 
you know, I'll just go to God later on in life. I couldn't tell you how many young people have told me that. Oh, yeah, you know, you're older now. But that's why, you know, you believe in God. So when I get a little older, I'll take God more seriously. But for now, I just want to have fun. You know, I can't tell you how many young people have told me that. Jesus walks on water. John chapter 6. Let's start from verse 15. I'm going to read fast because of time. Amen. But you could always review this at your own speed in your own time. Then Jesus, knowing that they were going to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountainside by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea and they got into a boat and started to cross the sea to Capernaum. It was already dark and Jesus had still not come back to them because Jesus was away um, praying to the Father, right? Verse number 18, the sea was getting rough and rising high because a strong wind was blowing. Then when they had rode three or four miles, wow, and were near the center of the sea, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and approaching the boat, and they were terribly frightened, as would I have been. Amen. Um, now, walking on water uh, is a... Uh, it's a way to prove Jesus' deity, but there's other claims of others that walked on water before Jesus walked on water um, through the Buddhism and all that other stuff. Amen. And remember, Jesus not just walked on water in this story, in this scripture, in this situation. He did more than just walk on water. Amen. So a lot of people say, ah, people could walk on water. That's not that doesn't mean they're God. And you're right. doesn't mean that you're God if you can walk on water. Amen. Um, but Jesus had the power over the water. He created the water. Amen. And he shut things down. And he um, started things and stopped things. Amen. By the power of his word. Good morning, Sister Joanne. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So, so they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water, and they were terrified. They were frightened. Verse number 20. But Jesus said to them, it is I, I am, it is I, I am, which means he's saying it's God. Do not be afraid. Verse 21, then they were willing to take him on, the, on board the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore of the land to which they were going. So it looked like a presto moment, a suddenly, amen. When Jesus got on that boat, they arrived. Verse 22, the next day, the crowd that stood on the other side of the sea realized that there had been only one small boat there and that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples have gone away alone. Right. So that's interesting. What happened just there? Amen. I don't know if you caught that. Jesus was on the boat. They got to the other side. The crowd saw the boat and they noticed that Jesus wasn't with the disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. So I don't know if, remember, it was dark, the scripture says, when this happened. So I don't know if any of that crowd saw what was going on. The Bible doesn't say that there was other boats there watching. Amen? Could have been, but it doesn't say it. So I'm not going to put something there. But I could use my imagination. I'm not going to teach what I'm imagining. But I'm saying, could there have been other boats on that sea that saw the Lord walking on water? So that way, when they got to the other side, the crowd was like, um, we saw the Lord walking on the water. They were expecting the Lord to be on that boat or they were expecting whatever they were expecting. But they were on the other side, on the shore, waiting um, for the Lord and his disciples. Verse 23. Now, some other small boats from Tiberias had come in near the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Verse 24, so when the crowd saw that neither neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they boarded the small boats themselves and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Amen? So they already knew that Jesus, the one who performed miracles with the loaves and the fish and fed all his people, they said, well, if we need something, we're going to go and find Jesus. Some of these people were just getting what they needed. And the Lord knew that, and he knows that to this very day. Some people go to Jesus only to get what they need. And then they're like, bye, I'm out. Seems crazy, right? 
how many testimonies have I heard that people who are on a deathbed and they're testifying and say, hey, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Some actually do. And God actually gets them out of the situation. And some people actually follow him for the rest of their lives. Others say, man, that was good. I'm, I'm saved. You know, I'm healed. And they probably go a couple of weeks or a couple of months to church and get fired up. And then when the temptations of the world come, they're out. And they now think that they're saved, right? Born again. They think they're born again and they can live in the world and do everything that the old man wants them to do. Everything that the flesh wants them to do. I don't know about that. Amen? Because once the Lord has entered by way of Holy Spirit into the temple of God, which is your body, and you're still going doing worldly things, and living that way in the world, and living in sin, not just struggling with sin like everybody else, hello, I'm talking about living intentionally in sinful ways, and then you're saying you have Holy Spirit and you're born again and saved. I don't know about that. Amen. God knows. He knows our hearts. Amen. So it says in verse number 24. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they boarded the small boats themselves and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? When did you get here? Because we were looking for you. And this is where we see in our scripture for this morning, Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the signs attesting miracles, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. So Jesus knew their hearts, knew what they were thinking. We read the scripture before this. He knew that they were just looking for him to get what they needed. Nothing else, nothing more. Listen, right there, Jesus knowing all about us. He checks our mail. He reads our mail. He knows about it. But he yet he still will not force his way for us to follow him. He won't force us to follow him. He won't force us to believe in him. He won't force us to worship. Amen. This is all because our hearts believe in him. I truly believe who the Lord Jesus is. So I don't serve him because I know I could get what I need. I serve him because I need what he gives. It's a big difference. Amen. He is the life giver, sustainer of life, creator of life, giver of life. And he's the one who could resurrect life. Amen. So, yes, if I saw the Lord walking on water, I would be terrified because, you know, my, I have to use the sermon. I said, what's going on? Who is this walking on water? And those who are claiming that others walked on water before Jesus did that. Amen. Praise God. I mean, if you have evidence. Amen. We have evidence. We have the scriptures and eyewitnesses. If you have um, a book and eyewitnesses as well, praise God. Um, You're right. It doesn't mean they're deity. You're right. It doesn't mean that they're God. But what Jesus, his example here in this whole situation after he walked on water, got on the boat, immediately they went on the other side. Then the people... The crowds that were um, looking for Jesus, they boarded their boats, got to the other side. Jesus already knew their hearts. Um, Can you tell me somebody who not only walked on water, but knows the thoughts and hearts and intentions of mankind, of the people, of the crowds? Amen. And Jesus showed more than that. He showed more than walking on water, but I'm still on that miracle, walking on water. I have never seen people walk on water. There has been illusions of people walking on water, right? You have these uh, professional illusionists. I don't know if that's what you call them. Um, And they're seemingly walking on water. They're seemingly levitating. And we already saw the videos of how those tricks are done. Amen. But Jesus wasn't a trickster. He wasn't an illusionist, a magician. No, he was God Almighty. He is God Almighty. He is the Lord, sovereign over his creation. Amen. So if he wants to step on water as if it's solid ground, he'll do it. Amen. But he showed his miracles. If you read this, we read the scripture. He showed his miracles before. And he knew the crowd that was waiting for him on the other side. They weren't after Jesus to meet him, uh, to serve him, to worship him. Uh, They were seeking Jesus to get what they needed because they knew about the loaves and the fish. They knew about the times when he fed thousands of people. All in one shot 
without having to go to the supermarket, the Weiss or the Giant or the Key Food or whatever supermarket's near you, right? Or the Sea Town. He didn't have to go shopping and do compra for thousands of people. His words spoke and people were fed. His words spoke and the storms of the sea was, was canceled, were calmed. He got onto a boat, to a boat with his disciples, and they immediately suddenly got to the other side. Then he says, I am. We read it. Let's not deny what we're reading in the scriptures. I mean, you could you could say, oh, this is all made up all you want. Amen. I don't have enough time um, to go over how, how many manuscripts we have to back this up. We just don't have the original. And I thank God that we don't have the original because if somebody had the original, they could have tainted the original. They could have wrote things in the original and then redid the, the Bible. We have manuscripts upon manuscripts, copies upon copies upon copies and copies that say the very same thing. It's almost like proof read, proofreading books over and over again to get to the same point. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> do compra, yeah, right? He didn't have to do no compra. So, or make a compra. Um, Jesus walked on the water and he says, when they saw him walking on water, the disciples were terrified. I would have been terrified too. It was it was nighttime. They were in the middle of the sea, and you know things were happening to the boat. And they see Jesus, and he said, "It is I." In other words, I am. Do not be afraid. Amen. And that would have calmed down, calm down. That song that everybody's trending with. It would have made them calm down. It would have made me calm down because then I would have saw him. And remember, the disciples were already walking with him. So they knew who he was. They knew his voice. Amen. They knew his demeanor. They knew the way he walked. Amen. So they were calmed down. Once he got on the boat, they got to the other side. And the crowds. How many crowds have you been in uh, that seemingly, you know, they worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then when they get what they need in a situation, I've met tons of people um, that have come and gone in my life. You probably met the same type of people uh, that they found themselves in situations like they know if God don't get them through it, there it's not going to be good, and they're gonna you know, you know it's not going to be good. God shows up, like you'll pray for somebody, and God shows up in a situation, gets them out of the situation, Amen. Because of God's grace over the, everyone's life, we're living in the grace time of God, Amen. And then you start to notice they fade away. Some to just they're travelers. They're like um, people that go from church to church to church to get what they need from every single situation. So if they need uh, money in their life. Like we all need money. A lot of people I've seen it with my own eyes. They go to prosperous churches like mega churches, and then they they plead their case, and because of the kindness of the giving spirit of those type of churches, they they give them. Then they'll leave for that. Oh, I need um, help. I got in trouble with the law. So they'll go to another uh, established church that has lawyers that are known in their community. And, you know, they'll say their story. And because of their grace and kindness, they'll help them. I've seen, I'm telling you, I've seen people do this. They're getting what they need and then they're out. Amen. But listen. How about if I told you that God not only gives us what we need, amen, he's the God who sees all of our needs and provides for every single one of them. So therefore, I'm not looking for Jesus just to get my needs met. I'm looking for Jesus because he gives me everything I need. It's a difference. <laughs> it's unselfish, amen. When you serve the Lord unselfishly, amen, remember he knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. So we could fool each other all day, every day. We can't fool the Lord. Amen. You're going to want and need God for more than his miracles, for more than um, him providing food for us, money, finances, and all that. He does all of that. Yes, because he's good and he's faithful. He's trustworthy and he's merciful and he's Lord. But if you're only looking for God to satisfy your own need, that's selfish. And God knows it, he sees it, and he's going to deal with it accordingly. Amen. Sister Joanne says, I've gone to church day uh 
I've been going to church day or two years and something I never left the church because I wanted to leave. I left it because of going on with me and my husband and you know everything I've been through and still going through more. And I asked myself why I have to go to surgery on the 4th. Amen. Well, we have to do what we have to do. If the doctors say, listen, you need surgery, you need all of that. We'll trust what the doctors say, um, Sister Joanne, but we trust in the word. So we go trusting the word and allow God to work through the surgery. Amen. Um, This has been a long journey for you. I understand that. Amen. And we've been praying a long time for you as well. So we trust God, the one who's been with you day by day. Amen. To get you through what he has already gotten you through. Amen. I know you're not seeking God just to get what you need. Amen. It's obvious you're seeking God because he's all you need. Amen. It's a big difference. People, I hope you're listening. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. We're not worshiping God to get the self needs met. We're worshiping God because he's the only one who can meet our needs. Amen. Because there's people out there that go to, they'll grab from, Uh, Islamic religion, they'll grab from the Christian um, belief, right? They'll grab from Buddhism, they'll grab from all kind of different things. Oh, I like that, let me take that. Oh, I like that, let me take that. Oh, I like Jesus, let me take this, right? And there is like a a buffet of beliefs that they're grabbing onto and they're formulating their own type of God, amen? Unfortunately, that's not going to work. What's going to happen is you're going to be confused And you think everyone has a God. And everyone's God is the true God. There's only one true, living, holy, righteous, loving God. His name is the Lord Jesus. Yahweh Elohim. Right? El Shaddai. El Elyon. Amen. He is the Lord Most High. And he's found and revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to him. Seek him. Meet him. Not only to um, fulfill your needs selfishly. Amen. But to realize that he's everything that you've ever needed. Amen. It's a difference. So I'm out of time. I hope you get what I'm saying. Read John chapter 6, the whole chapter for yourself. Be blessed for today. Be blessed every day. And remember always that God is good. Peace.